We are live. Uh, yeah. February 2nd. I got zero caller F. I got moose. Moose. What's up, bro? <laughs> we got what's up, reindeer? What's happening, bro? Cha cha. Cha cha. What's happening, man? <laughs> hey, man, hey. hey, uh, we got stuff to talk about, Dow. We got some stuff. We got uh network upgrades happening at Super Bowl. The big game. This is ridiculous. You can't even call it by its name. It's Super Bowl 55. It's, it's the Brady Bowl. Or it's the Brady Bowl. Um, <laughs> he's going to lose. Because my homeboy is the real deal Holyfield. My brownies yeah, should see. be there. Real talk, my brownies should be there. They were supposed to beat the Chiefs. Uh, my homeboy yeah, will get scared in the pocket, man, like he always does. It freezes really, up. Really, bro? Number yeah. one passer rating against the Blitz. Number one. Not, he's even not, he's even better on the blitz than he is on a regular four man rush. How about that stat, Doug? Oh yeah, you know who no. sucks against the blitz? <laughs> Number twenty seven <laughs> passer rating against the blitz. Your boy, the goat, the goat. Ninety seven years old trying to throw a football, bro. You believe it? Ninety seven years old. Oh god. <clears throat> He's not old by like real life standards, but you know, like by NFL standards, bro. He's a geezer. It's just yeah. not many people make it this far, man. Well, this geezer has been there ten times, so that just boy good, you know. bro. That boy good. Yeah, <laughs> he's good enough to get you there. He's good enough to win it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, I watched the game a couple weeks ago, and you know he was throwing picks left and right, dog. Yeah. So if the Chiefs do it, he better be careful. Take care of that ball and those guys of his. All right. Godwin, you know, if Antonio Brown plays, I don't know if he's been ruled out or not. He's injured with a knee. Evans, these guys got to hold on to the ball, man. It touches their hands, they better catch it. They don't have if a they good get second picked, line, yeah. Bro, if they get if he gets picked, those Chiefs are going to hurt him bad. Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey. Let me tell you something about Travis Kelsey. That guy <clears throat> is a cheat code. All right, it's it's like you know, it's like uh, you're racing, you know, Toyota Corollas, and somebody's got a Formula One car. You know, he's just different. You know, he's the biggest and one of the fastest guys on the field. Catches everything. Dude is unguardable. He's the problem. I mean, the dude, he's like sleepwalking through the field, getting 18 catches for 180 yards and two TDs. Which I expect Travis Kelsey to have a big game. Uh, what up, Chris Magenta King? <laughs> I think we'll take him out at the knees. <laughs> I predict overtime. Sheesh, what a game that would be if it went to overtime. Yeah, Brady's not going to win. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Sorry, Barry. Yeah, sorry, Vic. I, I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it sucks to suck, but no, it's just not going to happen. Hey, Keon, good to see you. Finally made it for a live. I know Keon usually makes it for the replay gang, but good to see you for the live stream, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Does anybody know the over and under at the Las Vegas box office? Ooh, let's check the Vegas line, shall we? Vegas odds. NFL Super Bowl. All right, we have an open at minus three and a half. We have a current at minus three. We have uh, the Chiefs favorite to win by three. We have an over under of 56 points. What do you think? Over I think the uh, <clears throat> I think I've been looking up some of the um, predictions and over unders. A lot of websites, a lot of sites, a lot of predictions. They had the Chiefs three to one favored to win. I just don't believe any of that because uh, they've all been wrong on Brady's uh, victories. Okay, so there. <laughs> <laughs> No, most of the time Brady's the favorite to win a Super Bowl. This is probably yeah. one of the few times he's the underdog. So, right. Yeah, I don't think he could do it, Doug. If they fall behind, th then no. That's the one thing. If they if they gotta, if they get like a like a 15, 20 point spread, then then they'll win. It's it's not happening, bro. They are not getting a lead like that. Uh, Pat Mahomes, you know the. You no, know, I'm I saying if I'm saying if Kansas City gets that against Oh, that that'd be hard to overcome. They're exactly that offense yeah. is fierce. Yeah, they can't fall behind by more than a score. They fall by, right. by behind with two scores, it might be over. Right, exactly. Oh, John Hush. Oh, Johnny. 
Hush, young man. All I right. want you to go comb yeah. your hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Cha Cha. Go comb your hair, dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get this thing going, man. Uh, we got topics to discuss today involving the Super Bowl. Networks are getting bolstered, man. Uh, they're boosting the network on site at Super Bowl over at Raymond James Stadium. You didn't know I knew how to pronounce that, did you? Raymond James. All right, so Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Uh, there are some surrounding areas that got upgraded too, which is good. All right, so. Verizon came out and said, these network upgrades we did are permanent. So that's not, you know, cows. That's not cells on wheels. None of that stuff. Uh, they are legit putting nodes everywhere. Uh, they got millimeter wave all over the place. They modernizations. I'm guessing tons of small cells, too. They probably got some CBRS going on there. I really wish I was there because I would love to test it and see, you know, how they did it. You know, combination of LTE upgrades and a combination of you know, ultra wideband and small cells, whatever. I every time Verizon does upgrades, they do big upgrades. You know, they don't just come in and go small time. So they spent eighty million dollars. I don't know how much T Mobile spent. They didn't say. But you notice how Verizon put that in there? They let you know we just spent eighty million on this game. <clears throat> T Mobile didn't mention how much they spent, but T Mobile did tell you layer cake. You're getting cake dogs, so you're getting 600 megahertz updates, right? So you're getting N N71, <laughs> you're getting N71, you're getting N41, and you're getting N260. So they've got, we presume 100 megahertz channels of millimeter wave. Let's presume 60 megahertz of N41, and if 15, maybe 20 megahertz of N71. So they've got some nice upgrades. So if you're there. Please share some of those speed tests. Share some like service mode if you got an S series Galaxy. Let us know what you're connecting to. Let us know, you know, the different speed test metrics you get. I just uh I think this is a painful reminder that uh no matter what T Mobile says, they know what they must do, and it doesn't matter what they say. Millimeter wave is necessary. Yeah. And, we got fifteen you know, on six hundred. Right. So, okay, so 15 megahertz N71. Basically, if you don't have an a 5G phone, you're kind of stuck on like band 2 and band 66. Right, yeah. <laughs> All the bandwidth there. is Yeah, yeah it, it looks yeah. like T-Mobile's doing a good <clears throat> job of Here's here's the thing, and this is a public service announcement to anybody out there that has not upgraded their phone in the last few years. If you're on T-Mobile, you really need to get a 5G phone. The action is on the NR side. Yes. You know, I, I don't think I don't think you under like pushing your iPhone six in two thousand twenty one, like is ridiculous. They moved all the six hundred megahertz, what, three quarters of it, you know, eighty percent of it is now on the N side. So all the N seventy one, low band, you get your N forty one, there's sixty, eighty megahertz in some markets. They'll go standalone at some point. You'll be seeing larger channels than that. You know, the I would not be on T-Mobile without a 5G phone right now. Right. Unless I was phone. in, like, Olive Branch, Mississippi or something. Like, seriously, dog, I you got to have a 5G phone if you're a T-Mobile customer. On Verizon, it's less of a thing if you're not in an uh, ultra-wideband market because they're DSSing. So it's like, whatever. AT&T, I think it's wise to have a 5G phone. Their low-band 5G is pretty national, right, the band 5. In congested places, that might be a difference maker for you, right? Because it's a dedicated channel. So it keeps you off of the congested LTE, possibly. But, I mean, they're going to be turning on N30. They're going to be doing more with DSS and Band 2. You know, I'm just saying, for somebody to not have a 5G phone on T-Mobile, you're not really enjoying what T-Mobile's been doing for the last two years. Actually, going back three years, right? Because of 600 megahertz. If you've got a... 2017 or older phone you know which is possible there's people with iphone 7s you know and stuff like that so you gotta upgrade you know um <laughs> lavendi you are hilarious bro he said i've been to olive Branch, mississippi they got gumbo and cajun rice but no 5g <laughs> oh man that is tremendous nice lavendi bazing 
Hey, George, thanks for the super chat, man. I bet the Verizon wireless upgrades will blow away the T-Mobile upgrades and leave it in the dust. So here's the thing. George, that ultra-wideband from Verizon is no joke. I mean, we're talking, what are we talking? Probably at least 200 megahertz of ultra-wideband. Probably 400, right? Yeah. 400 is most, I mean, there's going to be people showing speed tests of three plus gigs on the new iPhone, on the new S series. Yeah. Yeah, they'll be getting three plus gigs. You know, you'll be getting uplinks of like 200, 150, 100. And then I think with T Mobile, when somebody's connected to 39 gigahertz, here's the thing, bro. I'm going to predict it now. Put me on the record, Moose. You ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. There will be more T Mobile speed tests showing millimeter wave than N41. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Convince me I'm wrong. You're right because there's no there's there's no forty one in the stadium. And forty one now. <laughs> Hold on a second. Whoa. Whoa. And forty one guy. All right. And forty one. I'm N forty one guy today. Okay. <laughs> I'm just having fun. Don't unsubscribe from my channel, please. Please don't. <laughs> Bro, they're going to be sharing speed tests of the 1.6 gigs per second yeah. on the 100 megahertz channel of 39 gigahertz, the N260. They're not going to be sharing N41 getting 300 megs. You know what I'm saying? They're just not. All right? So I'm just I'm calling it Moose, the proverbial put it on the board. All right? I'm on record. Put it on the board, dog. Put it on the board. <laughs> There's going to be literally probably less than a third of the of the attendees using T-Mobile. I would even say not even 10%. And they're going to be doing the most speed test. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Which is okay. Which is okay. But I'm just saying, I think we're going to be seeing more of the gigabit plus, and it's not going to have anything to do with N41. I, I do want to bring up the Wi-Fi solutions that are also going to be used in the stadium. Um, you know, we got, you know, probably uh, Xfinity. Spectrum, maybe Cox. I don't know. Well, I, I please know. no, please <laughs> no. That's sabotage. Don't do it, dog. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, all those Wi-Fi solutions will be there too, so people can. So, so why, why layer cake the Super Bowl? Why it's layer? It's, it's if you've layer got a site like every like... fifty feet, if you've got mm -hmm. a connection every fifty feet, why why low band it? Well, the Super Bowl. I mean, it's 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 got sites surrounding. It's got you know, IDAS systems inside, right? Uh, <laughs> Three megahertz. <laughs> <laughs> um, where the 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 approach that was used inside was in, was mid was mid band, you know, AWS PCS and memory wave. Hey uh, Ryan, what? So that's the what, that's what, the letter cake. What old phone has N seventy one? Old phone. What old phone has N seventy one? S twenty. That's old phone. Twenty year old. Okay. All right. Technically, okay. wait. Doesn't uh S S ten? Uh, yeah, the the S ten. Yeah. I thought the S ten. Doesn't the S ten five G has six hundred yeah. megahertz? Millimeter wave. Thank you. Oh, millimeter wave. Oh, that. Oh God. Okay. Don't get me to flexing up in here, dog. Don't get to don't get me to middle to flexing on the N seventy one right now. Yeah, N seventy one N seventy one would have been what the note, their their special note ten right. It was sub six. I think I think so. I don't okay. I don't remember off the top of my head. Five megahertz of millimeter wave. What is this real life? Would they? No. What are you oh, smoking? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's. I think it's. Uh, local medical people, 7,500, and the others have VIP connection. I'm hearing it's tw estimated 22,000, Alexis. Yeah. You know, so the, you know, I guess they don't need as much cheesecake because it's not layer cake. It's cheesecake <laughs> this year. <laughs> yep, no 10 plus. Yep. Oh, 5 gigahertz. Uh, I don't, that must be the Wi-Fi he's talking about then. The... um. 
Ooh, WrestleMania is coming to Tampa. Is that true? Ooh. Okay, so then, yeah, the upgrades being permanent is a must. Right. Okay. All right, nice. <laughs> That's the level of technical knowledge most NFL owners have. <laughs> Old white dudes who are dinosaurs. Nice, bro. Yeah. Hey, Firewolf Studios, what's up, man? 22,000 is very sparse. That's probably, what, half or a third of the capacity? They're usually like 70,000, some of those stadiums. So, uh, yeah, the I think 100 megahertz a millimeter wave will do. The more nodes, the better, obviously. Uh, it would have been nice to see more N41. Neville showed the map. We saw, like, the pink and the purple and magenta and the Lavender white or whatever. Right, the white, the white yeah. you know, whatever it is. Racist. And then they got all that <laughs> stuff going on. And, um, yeah. I mean, you really got to have a 5G phone. You know, you're going there with an LT phone. I mean, who knows? You know, it's going to be a toss-up. There's going to be a lot of that traffic. So getting on the uh, the NR connections would be wise. Maybe you recently upgraded to, um, you know, an S-series device, maybe a 20 or newer, 21. Maybe you got the new iPhone 12. Any of those phones, that'll be good. Mm -hmm. What do you, how do you how do you think the T-Mobile network will perform, uh, Moose? Thinking about look at all that those, those upgrades. Um, you know, it's very uh, interesting you mentioned that because, for example, AT and T, every single hotel has a DAS now. Nice in good. Tampa, and I'm not just talking about Tampa. I'm talking about Clearwater. I'm talking about Saint Petersburg. I'm talking about Adamsvale. I'm talking about the whole within a 30 mile radius. The whole shebang. Yes. So that's why whenever T-Mobile says, oh, yeah, we did this. I'm like, no problem. It's going to be great at the stadium. It's going to be great in certain areas. But is it going to be great everywhere? I don't know. <laughs> Moose, how much do you, so Verizon spent 80 mil. Yeah. How much do you think T-Mobile spent? T-Mobile probably spent. 30 million, 25 to 30 million dollars for their capacity upgrades and uh, densification of their band zero one. Cool. Touche, zero cool. I say Touché. 20. Touche. I think AT&T spent the most though because of just how many things I'm seeing here. Yeah, but I'm just, just not counting, you know, the Super Bowl. I'm counting all Tampa, Clearwater, oh. Clearwater Beach. 20 million, man. 20 million, that's it. Okay, then I was wait. Well, hold up. If it's everywhere, <clears throat> it needs to be more. Well, um, I don't. I don't know how extensive. <clears throat> I don't know how extensive the upgrades are in terms of how far they went out from Tampa. So, like the whole Clearwater, Saint Petersburg situation. The further they went out, obviously, the more likely it is they exceeded twenty, thirty million. Yeah, whatever, probably. But, yeah. So, I don't know, man. What's the market share like in that area? Is it it's, T Mobile Country? Is it Verizon Country? Verizon is it country. AT and T Country? It's Verizon uh, country. it's 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 Verizon AT and T. But okay. T, well, I mean, yeah, it's AT and T heavy pretty much around here. But Verizon's congested like hell, you know. Mm. So it is an Ericsson market. Keep that in mind. Yeah. So it's a good performer then. Yeah, but. In terms of postpaid, it's Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T. And then if we're talking about overall, it's T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T. So I understand the DAS systems. How about AT&T yeah. for the millimeter wave? Oh, ooh, the, oh, dude, it's disgustingly amazing. C-RAN, C-RAN. <laughs> there was a significant amount of C-RAN installed in downtown. And what I mean by downtown is like... um. Jackson Street. Uh, I don't even know these places, honestly. But basically, it's like a daisy chain of millimeter wave. So if you were to test millimeter wave in the popular areas of downtown Tampa, you will not drop 5G+. plus. That's the idea. I see what Verizon has done in these neighborhoods and crannies of Cleveland. <clears throat> and I've noticed that it's coming in bunches. You know, it's 20 sites. It's 30 sites. That's really how you got to do millimeter wave. You can't just, like, plop one here and then eight blocks down, plop another one there. It's just not right that way. It's really designed to be in bunches. The principles of networking still apply to millimeter wave. You know, it's sites in bunches. 
you know, this is a little smatter here and there doesn't do much. Yeah, I agree, Kimon. It's pretty good. It's in a stadium it's gonna be easy. You know what I mean? You 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 put a few nodes, you know, you point them at the seats, you point them at the stands, you know, you get people connected that way. The DAS systems seem to be fitting too. Hey Rubes, thanks for the donation, man. Appreciate the super chat. Quick question. What carrier would you say will have the best improvements in speed, coverage, 5G in the next year? Verizon. If I'm if I'm counting C band, Verizon. it's Verizon. Verizon. And I'm going to tell you why it's Verizon. Verizon. Straight okay. up. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what are, <laughs> okay. What's the, there's no debate. Right. I mean, there's, it's just the obvious. Okay. So the reason it's going to be Verizon in terms of improvement is because they are literally going to be upgrading the tightest tower grid in the country. They have the most tower sites in close proximity to one another, meaning the gaps between their tower sites is small. The C-band is going to be a very, very consistent, nice 5G connection, and it's going to be a wide channel. So really, that's probably what we're looking at. T-Mobile can still make some noise with their N41, I'm not saying that they're not in there. They kind of have a leg up on their build this year. But I'm just looking at the current tower grid and Verizon using small cells. I think, like, seriously, what T-Mobile's not telling you, and I really wish they would bust the U-turn on this, you need small cells. The two most effective wireless networks in the country right now are Verizon and AT&T. And the common theme is they have a nice grid of small cells in CRAN. T-Mobile does not. And they are truly the most coverage-challenged carrier in the country. And that's what small cells can do. They can get rid of those little coverage gaps, solve your little handoff problems, and then add capacity all at the same time. There's nothing wrong with small cells. Verizon has over 50% market share in the CLE. They have small cells or macros every half mile to a mile. That's how it's done. There is no spectrum, dog, and the network holds up. Tower density. Literally, when they upgrade those sites to the CBRS, C-band antennas, <coughs> that's the best 5G network in the country. And it might take a year or two years for us to say it's national or whatever. You know, of course, the function is going to be how much they spend. They could do it faster if they spend more. But my prediction is once C-band is out, that's that's the golden ticket. It's C-band. They call it Goldilocks 5G Spectrum. I didn't call it that. You know? Just saying. It, it, it's like um, when we see the amount of upgrades and how quickly it's going to be happening in the second half of this year, you'll know. You'll I still know. think... I still think that there's going to be some markets where T-Mobile is going to be kicking butt in speeds. I think there's going to be like 25 really, really fast T-Mobile networks. Like, oh, oh yeah. Like you'll you'll see the speed test. Like, okay, so take for example, you got Open Signal, you got Ookla, and you got um, Root Metrics. If you look at some of the data and you look at some of the results from next year, I predict that there will be a handful of markets where T-Mobile's way ahead. Because they've got the market share, they're going to put a lot of money in those markets, and the N41 upgrades will be extensive. Oh, and they might do millimeter wave. That would be cool. They could do that, too. You know, small cells. <laughs> <laughs> the problem that I see... Mitch McConnell likes small cells. He told me so. See, the problem that I see, though, is that, you know, we've been... I've been, you know, helping Caleb... Uh, zero core RF, uh, do some testing in Southern California market. Um, and band 41, man, it's just, if it was band seven, it would be a much better experience, right? If it was, was that, was that question to me or Moose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, zero cool. Yeah. What was your, what was your, what's your question? Sorry. If, if band 41 was actually band seven FDD, wouldn't it be a mm -hmm. better experience? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you you would have a common, you you know you would have a um, a simultaneous uh, downlink channel and a another uplink channel. You know, 
two separate frequencies pulling the weight. Yeah. Uh, instead of us getting like uh, Tyrone mentioned it a long time ago, it's like a speed island where just in that 1.5 to 2 block radius, I'm getting good speeds. I'd be getting speeds much further away. Yeah, your your power will be uh, greater. Your, your transmit power will be greater on FDD as on TDD. That that transition will be welcomed because the range here has not been good. So I'd be uh, very open to that. Alexis mentions, how about Dish? Where will they be at the end of the year? <laughs> uh, they'll be putting up that site in Colorado, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> That is a great question, Alexis. They just got the, um, what was it called? The Vertical Bridge deal. And Vertical Bridge has 300,000 sites. So Dish could get on every single one of those, but they won't. Uh, do you think they get on 10% of those? What do you think? I, I, it's hard to tell and speculate. I don't know. I, I don't. I have nothing to go off of a of a like a build out plan. All we have is just deals. That's all I we know, have. Like, I know. You know, it's just like well, okay, we, so we, the <laughs> network the network stuff, like the um the core, the open ran, like all those things are kinda nice. Everything seems to be nice um <clears throat> in terms of like um the theoretical, like theory. And then the tower deals, I think it's twenty thousand up to twenty thousand yeah. cell sites for Crown Castle. And then they got up to three hundred thousand sites in a catalog for vertical bridge. Like that's what they have. It's it's rooftop sites, it's macros, you know, it's infrastructure, like city whatever. But they don't have small cells. None of these com companies have small cells. So or the the deal with Crown Castle doesn't include small cells and Vertical bridge doesn't do small cells. So there's not a single small cell on the docket for Dish. There's going to be yeah. a third company. I don't know if it's Nokia. I don't know if it's Samsung. There has to be some kind of hardware deal coming up soon. Yeah, a vendor yeah. deal. Right, a vendor deal. Like, you know, they got Nokia for the network core, but there's got to be more. So we'll see. I hope it's not Nokia. Please don't be Nokia. That's all I ask. <laughs> uh, that's not what my sources say, Francois. My my what? sources do not say eighty megahertz <laughs> area? on forty one. Yeah. So, um, I actually believe, and I really do mean this, AT and T's extensive carrier aggregation matters a lot. So the fact that they've got a really nice tower grid with a lot of recently upgraded tower sites i feel like they're a difference maker too i don't want to just say well it's going to be verizon i think at&t is going to be legit too and then t-mobile has n41 all this depends on spending but i'm telling you guys it's exciting times in wireless these 5g upgrades are going to be fast and furious in the next two years it's gonna be crazy thanks Karen. i'm excited to you, see man. i'm excited to see you know uh, how band 77 or 79 or whatever the, you know, frequency band, once it aggregates with the existing NR, ooh, it's going to be dangerous. That'd be really good. Really fast. Thank you, Keon. I appreciate the super chat, man. No, you're never a bother, dude. I appreciate you. Thank you. And my brother, BG Grizzly, my dude, thank you for the super chat too, man. Appreciate you. Hashtag two live crew. Yeah, man. I'd say 80 megahertz of any channel. Fantastic. Absolutely. And 41 included. 5G in my area is terrible. Horrible. Sheesh. Must be low band. <laughs> or DSS. <laughs> Must be one or the other. Uh, let's go to the Samsung eSIM situation. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Literally shaking my head how disappointed I am, man. I do have some insight on that, too. Look, man. If you want eSIM, you have one option, and it's the iPhone. And it's not even good. But at least it, it works a little bit. right? You put an eSIM profile on there. You turn it off and on with your other lines. Whatever. 
it, it kind of works. The 5G situation with it is messed up. Whatever. They say they're going to fix it. It's in beta. Carlos has been lecturing me about beta lately. So, <laughs> beta but Alan Sneed even, ain't no beta. <laughs> but I ain't no beta. You know, you feel me? So, uh, he's been lecturing me and giving it to me. So, Samsung and the eSIM situation. Samsung, I hate you. You're the worst. Yes. You are the worst. You've been the worst. You're going to stay the worst. I hate Horrible. you. Okay? You teased us with the dual SIM. It's on there. It's capable of it, but you couldn't flex on the carriers. You let the carriers flex on you. You ain't got the guts to do it. That's what it boils down to, a slave to the carrier. See, Apple told the carriers, uh, you don't touch our phones. You can sell them if you like, but you ain't touching our phones, dog. And that's why dual SIM kind of sort of works. Yeah, it Google needs to get too. better, though. Well, Google has a chance to do it. Are they going to flex? Yeah, 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 they will. Yeah. Uh, it, basically, uh, what I read is that um, you're right. Uh, Google and Apple have actually struck those deals with the carriers. Um, uh, Samsung just chickened out. And when I, what I read is that they're never going to enable eSIM on that U.S.-based phone unless you're overseas or something, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, found exactly. a, I, found, I found a workaround for the eSIM. Really? You buy, yeah, you buy the international model and you ship it here. <laughs> no 5G, though, in the international. Yeah, you do. No, yeah, is yeah. there? Is oh, there really? Sub 6. Yeah, but do you think it'll sub work six. for as far as like care activation? You sub, think, or? Well, you're going to have to activate it and then just put the SIM in the phone. You're going to have to activate it on something else. Mm, it might work. All right. Yeah, but you're only going to be sub 6 unless it's a model that's coming out of Japan or something and they've got millimeter wave on there. You're going to have right. to see if, you know what I'm saying? Because Taiwan, Japan, I don't know if is China doing millimeter wave yet. They might be on it now, but who knows if it's even on there. I'm not sure. Yeah, South I know it's showing Korea the sub-6 gigahertz, South Korea. Okay, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, so yeah. if that's the case, yeah. it might be on there. I just don't know if it's 260 or 261 or... It's a workaround. You want the S21 on dual SIM? <laughs> yeah. Who knows how... I mean, that's the thing. Like, who who knows how good that's going to work, though? You know, because... Ah, the, no the, the pro- the, oh, Yeah, God. right. So the, the problem with that is Volti, number one. Number two, the frequency allocations are actually different from the international models versus the U.S. models. They're actually tuned differently, right? So if you get an international model, it's not going to be tuned to the baseband units of our towers. It's going to run like crap. Calling it's going to like awful. crap, exactly. Yeah, it's going to like crap. <laughs> it's, it's, That's it's a losing proposition. Yeah. Samsung, I hate your guts. You are the worst. <laughs> All right. So, Google, please save the day. Please. They will. Please. Don't worry. We, they will. We've literally asked you for nothing. We told you to please stop building mid-rangers and to build us something <laughs> of a flagship. Please, that with eSIM. Uh, we would gladly buy it. You know, I'd spend a million, gazillion, fulfillion dollar if you would just do that, please. Thank you. Yes. Oh, yes, I got my no. eyes set on two of them, and that's everything I've been reading on <laughs> Pixel 6. That is uh, going to be the phone of the year, man. It is It is ridiculous, dude. The eSIM situation. I don't know, man. Plus, you'd be settling for a Xenos processor or whatever if you got the international version. like Exynos? Uh, Ugh. How do you, is that how Ugh. you pronounce it? It's E-X-Y-N-O-S, yeah, yeah. right? But have you heard Exynos. it spoken? Yes, I have. It's Exynos. Okay, because I've never heard it spoken other than, like, mm-hmm. us, right? So, yeah, it's, like, it's I don't ex- know. Exynos. Yeah, Exynos. It is Exynos? Okay. Now, I will yeah, Exynos, say this. Yeah. I will say this. The 14.5 beta came on yesterday. And it works. 5G, sub-6, millimeter wave. I haven't tested it yet, but I will. It works. Dual SIM, 5G, finally. But Exynos is how I say crap in Mandarin, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, but you he's know, right, bro. I heard it. I <laughs> I got the translation. It's on Google, dude. I heard but, it. But you know the um, the interesting thing, right? That we were talking about the other day is that if you're doing multiple eSIM profiles, it's almost a given that you should upgrade to the beta, fourteen point five. I ain't no beta, dog. 
<laughs> it's not in the DNA, dog. I can't, can't do betas, you know? All right, whatever. We'll do the beta, and, whatever. You know what I predict, actually? Because uh, Apple has that, that toggle feature with the 5G standalone. Um, with the next release of Android, I could seriously see the Pixel lineup having that same option. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be nice. Little birdie in my ear said there's going to be that option, and it's going to be activated. So there. <laughs> little you birdies on that, chirping. Samsung. Little birdies be chirping loud as hell sometimes, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Chirp, chirp. <laughs> hey, man. Uh, AT&T, money. All right. They got some money. All right. They secured a loan for almost $15 billion. I firmly believe this is half of what they spent on C-Band. I think it's half. All right. I'm on record as saying it is half. So I think they spent $28 billion. I can't tell you how happy I am to basically confirm that they exceeded the expectation of 15 to 20 billion. And let me tell you why. The worst thing you can do in business is allow past failures to dictate future failures. You saw what happened to Sprint. A failure from early 2000s literally failed them for 20 years. They never recovered because they never stuck to a plan and saw it through. I don't want to give credit to John Stanky because I don't think he deserves it because he's part of the reason why they are where they are today. But I believe the right people have a loud enough voice and said to him, we cannot step back in wireless. We make money with wireless. We need C-band. If they didn't go in big on C-band, especially in the markets where they have that share, they would lose 5G badly. And they're in a good position, and I'm going to tell you why. They've really changed their tower grid. The C-RAN upgrades are going to be crucial for C-band upgrades. And all the new sites, all the new builds, the band 14, all this counts. AT&T is almost unrecognizable as a wireless company today when it comes to the network. I'm telling you, two, three years ago, this conversation is very different in the CLE. It's Verizon only, in my opinion. But now, AT&T is legit and wireless. Why would you regress? Why would you regress because of what you did in Warner Media? How does that make sense? What has been buttering your bread has been wireless? Don't let that stop. Use it to catapult your business, which I think they're going to do. And, and I think this loan proves that. AT&T is going to be legit. With C-Band, they have the ability to have one of the most capacitive networks It'll rival Verizon's if they can get their tower density up. See, that's that's the thing. They can spend. They they already said they're going to do twenty two billion, so the spending is going to be there next year. It's going to be good stuff from AT and T. You cannot let past business mistakes lead to more business mistakes in the future. Correct and move forward. No more of the same. Whatever you did in the failure part, stop it. Move on. That means sell DirecTV. I don't care what it takes. Take the loss. Take the hit. Whatever. And just invest in what you know makes money. This is the most focused I've ever seen AT&T. They told you fiber, wireless, and HBO Max. Three things. That is all they care about. DirecTV, gone. All that other TV stuff, gone. Yeah. The DSL, gone. Focus. This is what we've been asking for for two years since they started getting that debt through DirecTV and Time Warner. I I completely agree. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. Fiber, wireless, HBO Max. Those are the three things that we love the most. And they all succeed. Consumers. And they, they all succeed. succeed. Yeah. Keep at it, AT&T. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know I have an ongoing theory that by 2022, end of 2022, AT&T might be the first carrier where there's 
zero domestic roaming. That right there speaks volumes. Because if that is the first carrier to be absolutely 100% no roaming anywhere you go in the United States, you'd have coverage. It might happen. I would like, yeah, I would like that. I think the sad reality, there's two things actually uh, that you guys have to know about. I don't think I'm really reaching here. If you are on T-Mobile and you don't have good service where you live, you live in rural America, that's not changing anytime soon. I don't think they're putting any attention to coverage in rural areas and extended parts of the country. I don't think, I mean, unless you're on like the edge site where you, like they could get a a band 71 upgrade that might help because they put low band on there. Maybe it gives you an additional mile of reach or something compared to like band two only or band 66 only or something like that. But honestly, if you are in rural America and and you're a T-Mobile customer and you don't have good T-Mobile coverage there, I don't think that's really changing much in the future. And actually, I'll take this one step further. I don't think Verizon is going to be extending its network much either. I think Verizon feels like they did enough in LTE and tower builds in rural America. I think they're tapped out. I think the coverage yeah. thing is now going to be AT&T with Band 14. So if you don't have good coverage where you live, I think your only option two, three years from now, the only good one is going to be AT&T. And it's because of FirstNet. No, I I started huh. thinking about this whenever um <laughs> don't sell the house one day. <laughs> yeah, um so I was you know, we were testing on Periscope with uh Zero Cool and one of the things that I noticed is so if you have a T Mobile sector, okay, or you have an, an antenna looking towards your home, okay, there's a good possibility that very soon you will get band 41. But if there isn't a T-Mobile tower nearby, or if it's not close enough, do not expect any improvements. That's what you're saying, right? Like, let's say, um, let's say you live in a market where T-Mobile is, it's there, but it's not the greatest. So the signal's weak. There's not much low band. You might, see improvements because they'll upgrade sites to band 71 right so that'll help it you know you get more range out of the low band but if you're in an area where there are no tower sites and the the network lost usa comnet and you know um what's the other one us cellular you're screwed unless you live in a Chantel region or a swiftel region you're screwed there's nothing coming your way i'd like to be wrong but i'm serious if you are a Verizon customer or a T-Mobile customer and you don't have good coverage by now, it ain't happening, Chief. Your best bet and probably only hope is AT&T with Band 14 because they will be building new sites in those places. I just found out from a little birdie the Grand Canyon has three new tower sites. <laughs> who, the heck, who the heck does that but FirstNet? You get what I'm saying? And Band 14 and AT&T. That's what I'm talking about. T-Mobile ain't going to the Grand Canyon. They might go on vacation, but they're not building a tower site. You know what I'm saying? Verizon don't care about the Grand Canyon. If nothing's there, they don't. I'm telling you, dog. What Verizon has, they're they're good with. They're focusing on enterprise. They're focusing on ultra wideband. They're focusing on upgrading customers to premium plans. You have to look at what carriers do. Forget what they say. Watch what they do. Verizon's got a bunch of sites with band 13 only. Those might get some additional capacity, but ain't going to be no new sites, dog. Ain't happening. They can go to a band 13 only site, put a 66 and a 2, and they'll say, hey, tower site does 200 megs now. We'll see you in six years. See you in eight years, you know. Yeah, like uh, I know Zero Cool and I, we talk and Sneed, we talk about this all the time. What's the incentive? You know, what's the incentive for the other carriers? First Net's, First Net's a contract. Yeah. They have no option. Exactly. You are contractually obligated to build it out or we take it away. Period. That's it. All right, Ryan, I got you. AT&T sucks on Long Island. 
I heard you the first three times, dog. Okay. I hope it gets better for you, dog. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, somebody, can we get him a site on Long Island, please? Can somebody find – Ryan, DM me your address. We'll make magic happen, bro. We're going to get a C-Ran over by your house, dog. <laughs> we'll help you out, man. Jesus. What about uh, – what's up with Long Island, man? I thought only Greg was the guy that was talking is about – Is AT&T stuff. bad on the Long Island? Like, everybody knows that? Is that a thing? I think There's so. There's a lot of areas, yeah. yeah. There's a lot There's of areas, a lot areas. Of areas. horrible on Long Island for every what? carrier. Why? Yeah, oh, for every carrier. Is it red tape? Is that the problem? It's part of it. Yeah. I mean, there are rich, ridiculously rich areas, and then there's, you know, upper middle class areas, and then there's urban areas, you know, like closer to Queens and Brooklyn. But so why, so why the lack of build? So a lot of it is you build a tower, it degrades the value of the property areas around. Insane, it, right? right? Insanity. Yeah, it does. That's why. Bro, I won't move to a place that has horrible cell coverage. That's right. bad property value. I ain't going. I'm blowing up Ranger Horse comments to get him in touch. What, what are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this? Some kind of what is this? Some kind of haiku? What is going on right now? It's like poetry. You guys got poetry going on in the thing. It's like I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna save the day. <laughs> Lots of nimbies. Yeah, you ain't lying, Barry. In case you guys didn't know what NIMBY stands for, it's not in my backyard. It stretches into all types of stuff. Environmentalists also have problems with this type of situation. Nobody wants a landfill in their city. right? Nobody wants a nuclear power plant in their city. You know, it's that sort of thing. Nobody wants 5G, I guess, because it you know, kills brain cells, apparently. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> light them up, light them, get them out of here. <laughs> oh, man. It's... Uh... Wow, I, I had no idea it was that bad, dude. You know, we don't have those problems here in the CLE. Uh, unless unless there's l- little pockets of town that I don't know about. Verizon puts up nodes everywhere. <laughs> AT&T puts in for a C-RAN. It's up in two days. Two days. I saw him build it, and it was on air in two days. Uh, T-Mobile upgraded, you know, N41 sites easily. I mean, they left the equipment on the ground for about two months, but... They had upgraded. I found the employees sleeping behind the dumpster, but that's another story. For oh, another God. Day. <laughs> the wires are all messed up. Hey, Chantel deals official. $1.9 billion. Celebration. Celebration. Yeah. All right, so the reason I say this is a celebration is it's the last of the Sprint affiliates. Swiftel, a.k.a. What is it? Brokerage? Brookings. What was it called? Yeah, Brookings, Brookings, uh, yeah. Brookings Utilities. Yeah, so that wrapped up. Uh, this is the final residual dispute issue. Uh, it was just amount. They had to value the assets. Uh, it got valued at $2.1 billion, and they paid 90% of it. So, yeah, instant coverage in a very difficult terrain. Instant coverage in a part where they don't have it. Retail space, a name, right? So now it's going to be Chantel by Timo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Uh, customers, no, all, retail locations. Yeah, they're they're all Sprint sites. They're all Sprint stores, right? Uh, Sprint has amazing coverage in Virginia, West Virginia. So all those sites that Chantel built out that did really, really good, uh, they'll all be converted to T-Mobile sites, which will be really good for customers. And uh, they all get six hundred on it too. Yeah. F- from what I understand, the Chantel coverage is not the fastest, but it's the most extensive. So you're not going to be getting 200 megabits per second in the middle of Appalachia, but you'll be getting 30 and 50 and 60. So you'll be doing HD video if you got a plan for it. You know, I think they'll be able to do 300 because the microwave backhaul caps at 300, right? Zero cool. Uh, it depends on the um, the microwave dishes that are used. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it it goes anywhere from about 150 to 300, yeah. Um, but they've actually improved back tall technologies to bring it up to a uh, gigabyte, which is really good. So, by the way, there's a comment here about AT and T Puerto Rico. Yes, AT and T did leave Puerto Rico. Uh, sold it to Liberty. Uh, Yo, JC, JC, yeah. when you come into the SMT podcast, you got to put a shirt on, dog. 
What you got going on in the Avatar, dog? <laughs> this is a P. This is a PG show, dog. This is a family show, dog. Come on, man. Come on, dog. PG. PG. Uh, domestic roaming. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just playing, dog. I'm having fun. So I got this news mm -hmm. about the LG Wing and the Pixel Five. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Those. Those. Listen. Those are two mid rangers through and through, you know. Don't get it twisted. They're seven sixty five modems, uh, chipsets with with mid range modems, right? X fifty two. They're getting C band as a software upgrade, so you'll get some kind of a security patch if you've got one of these phones, and all of a sudden you'll have N seventy seven. What is going on with the Samsung S twenty line? No word on if those phones are getting C band upgrades. What? Uh, Exynos is crap. <laughs> and Mandarin. Bro, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Samsung, I hate you. You are the worst. <laughs> Literally the worst. Somebody please send this to Samsung. Like, LG Wing. Okay, no offense if you got one. It's a mid-ranger. It's not really to be offended by. You spent what you spent for it. It was a mid-range device. Pixel 5, I own one. I love it, but it's a mid-ranger. The chipset screams mid-ranger. When I want to render video and edit it, it takes more time than it does on my flagships. Calling a spade a spade. These phones are getting uh, updates for software updates to get five future 5G-enabled bands. We don't have any word of the S-Series line getting any of that. I'm, I'm upset, all right, because Samsung's unwilling to do it. But Google's willing to do it on their mid-ranger. And LG, who said, we're going to discontinue our smartphone business, said you're getting N77. Um, one of the reasons why Google and LG is doing, especially Google, is because of that. Uh, those Pixel devices can be certified as a FirstNet device on AT&T. Okay, that's one reason, as well as they also the Apple devices, right? So you, they have to have C-band, because when AT&T launches C-band, um, that's going to be uh, Kerag with their band 14. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, again, uh, Google and Apple do have that cozy relationship with the carriers to to add band 77, 78, and 79. Uh, Samsung is just... I, I feel that, you know, Samsung has this mantra to where uh, we'll, out -press our, we'll over press our phones and people will buy them and who, and you know, and... They're not. They, they don't really care what like the carrier thinks because they've been. They know people are going to buy their phones, you know. So it's kind of interesting. What do you think about the omission of the Pixel Four A five G, not mentioned mm. in that update? I think it's a. To be Same honest, modem. I think. Same modem. I, I, to be honest, I think it's a um, a marketing tactic to get people into higher priced Pixel fives. Get the that's pseudo why. flagship instead of the actual mid ranger. Exactly, and that's yeah. going to be the same thing when the Pixel Six, Pixel Six XL comes out. It's going to be a f fanfare of, you know, Google. I feel that they're really going to put some heavy advertising a lot more than they have the Pixel Five, which I've seen you know ads online. Right, I feel that they're going to maybe do some TV spots. Um, I feel like they're going to have a huge, huge marketing push. For the Pixel 6, and I hope they do. I hope they make Samsung shed a tear of it. That's what I want them to do. <laughs> your tears sustain me. Yeah, <laughs> right. Drink their tears. <laughs> yes. Hey, Drink their tears, to... right? <laughs> what if it comes after? What about if it comes later? I don't care when it comes out, right. you know, no, just no. as long as it's released. All right. the, the, uh, oh, the update? The, yeah, the update. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's fine. If they'll do it, they'll do it, you know? I mean, even if it was to come out with the launch of the new phones, like, say, whenever they decide to launch the 6, like, if it launches in Q3, you know, because C-Band isn't going to be out until December. I already got 100% confirmation on that, and it's yes. You had to say it like that, didn't you? I did. You had to throw it in there. That's like why I'm that, excited. That's, that's why I'm so excited about this Pixel 6. I've been hyping it up for, like, almost a year or more. Well, well we were disappointed in the mid-ranger. It just wasn't the same. Because we yeah. loved the four, we loved the four right. XL. I loved my three XL. I still have my three XL, dude. It's a fantastic phone. 
it's as powerful or more powerful than my Pixel Five. I mean, so we all knew what powerful. the we all knew what the Pixel Five was going to be. We all knew it was going to be a mid ranger and oh, just an okay phone. But the Pixel Six is where it's at because they. I still don't get why they did that. They didn't have to. It was just not I, necessary. I think the reason. I'm glad nobody bought it. <laughs> you know, seriously, I'm glad because it was a reminder to them that you don't know what you're doing. I yeah, I, I See think how long it took them to sell yeah. out. It took them months and months to sh sell out of their first batch. A long time. Yeah, I think with their new chipset with the Pixel Six, I think that's what they're gunning for. I think that they're gonna get, uh, they're gonna do something good with it, something great for consumers, and I really think they're gonna get the, a lot of people to buy in. I think they're gonna have a, a huge. Uh, like I said, a marketing push for the Pixel 6. The, the thing about the Pixel phones is I have an iPhone. I have a Galaxy. I have all types of phones. The best smartphone experience is a Pixel. The best software experience is a Google Pixel. It's better than the iPhone. I've never had to put an ice pack on my Google Pixel. I have to use an ice pack on my iPhone. You know, my Samsung, obviously, the, the software is clunky. You know, it's a lot of lag and stuttering and, you know, glitching or whatever. I mean, it's not the worst. It's it's better than it used to be. TouchWiz was awful. But the Google Pixel experience is the best smartphone experience you can spend money on. I mean, when Google sent me a phone for free, I did cartwheels. I was going to buy one anyway. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's how good the software is. No better integration in a in an ecosystem in my opinion i don't care what anybody says about ios and uh you know apple pay and all that that's all true that's all good but if i'm just looking at a standalone phone it's not the iphone it's the google pixel you know the 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 ios thing is something else it's everything else it's apple music it's icloud it's all this other stuff but as a phone experience i think google pixel does it the best and there's a couple of phones that almost do it as good, like the OnePlus, like the Motorola's of the world. They almost are like Google phones. It's close. So if you want something a little bit more high-end than a Pixel, you can go with those things if you want. But I'm just saying, I've owned every Pixel. I've loved every Pixel. Same the here. The 2XL yeah. is by far a top five phone of all time. Seriously. I had the 2XL and did not want to get rid of it. But I had to upgrade to get the Snapdragon 845, you know, to get the 3XL. Or else I would have kept it. Best phone I ever had. It was Panda. Had the orange home button. It was black and white. The camera. The, everything was, was legendary. People were complaining about the display. I had no problems with the display. <laughs> I didn't have issues, so I, I didn't feel the same way as other people. Anyways, that was an LG display. It's not like it was really Google's fault, you know, hardware or whatever. But uh, I like my iPhone. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the iPhone at all. But I'm telling you, man, that Google Pixel 2 XL, my 3 XL, even my 5 is good. It's just not a, fl a flagship, that's all. The camera, I mean, you get, you know, people want to talk about cameras. It's the best. You know, if you're getting a camera, you're getting a Pixel if, if you're buying a phone for a camera. Uh, battery life's good. You know, on this new, this new one, this Pixel 5, it's really good. Sucks with my T-Mobile SIM in it, though. It was better with the AT&T line. Um, I don't know. I reach I for my, my Pixel, Pixel as four my... XL, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I reach for my Pixel the most out of all my phones. I really do. I mean, I got freaking five phones to reach for. I go with the Pixel. There's one more thing I wanted. To... Oh, the Verizon 3G shutdown. Finally. We got a date, dude. <laughs> January 1st, 2023. Bye-bye. Uh, the actual term or uh, phrase that they use, the Verizon spokesperson, absolute last possible date. Hold up. This is some blasphemous stuff right here. Hold up. Okay, I gotta, <laughs> we got to talk business here. This is ridiculous. First, they say, oh, yeah, um, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. So that date they is... They never said 2022. What is the date? <laughs> 2023. Exactly. Now we're talking 2023, three years when they were supposed to shut it down. But we got these people 
that cannot get out of 3G phones. We got embedded SIM devices like um, it's IoT devices. Zero cool. You know what I'm talking about? Like refrigeration. Yeah. Uh, machine monitors. to machine. Yeah. Yep. Machine to machine stuff that I would honestly pay these companies to just get rid of them and replace them with new stuff because it is limiting my spectrum. Okay. It's the cost benefit analysis. Once again, how much is this going to cost me and how long is it going to cost me to do it? It's ridiculous. You got people that won't get out of their three G only devices. You have people that have security systems on three G only. That all has to be changed. And there must be too much in terms of traffic that they're like, we legit can't shut it down. We're gonna have a lot of problems. Because you saw what happened at AT&T in San Francisco with the trolley situation, right? You remember that? Yeah. With the, yeah. With the public transpo? That was like, wait a minute, we sent you notifications. You didn't get them? And the San Francisco Utilities was like, what? That was this year? <laughs> like, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to have to get people out of that stuff, man. Well, I don't care what it takes. Get the people with the 3G phones off. You want a flip phone? Fine. We got LTE flip phones. Yep, that's right. You know? But here's if, the problem. Yeah. Here's the problem, Sneed. You just said something critical. <laughs> it's an LTE flip phone. Right? That's the problem. We are going to have a massive problem getting people off of LTE. If it's already having issues getting people off of 3G. Oh. Jeez. From what I understand, we're talking about Verizon being able to widen LT channels, you know, and, and yeah. we're, I mean, from what I understand, we're talking like 1900. So we're talking PCS. Uh, I mean, stuff that would help because it may take Verizon from a 15 megahertz channel to 20, which means you could DSS. You get what I'm saying? Like, yep. that's the difference in that little bit of spectrum. Exactly. Uh, so basically, uh, they're on the Verizon side, you're left with a five megahertz uh, 1X carrier on 800, and then the EVDO side, five megahertz there, right? So you'll be able to uh, bump that up additional five on the uh, LTE side, right? So it's, it's kind of a pain, man. Like Verizon doesn't have to convince us. We're freaking buying a new phone every year, right? We're, we're trading in our old one and... We're trading in a year-old phone, two-year-old phone. We're talking about people rolling 3G flippers. We're talking about people that have the old security systems that are 3G only. Mm -hmm. All that stuff has to get changed. There must be a lot on there, and Verizon has not been successful trying to get them off because they literally added two more years. Honestly, yeah, at some point, bad. I would send these people notifications. Can I ask you something, bro? Where are they going to go? You really think you're going to lose them? Hi, AT&T, can I connect my 3G <laughs> home security system, please? You know, they're not going to put you on. They're not. They're shutting theirs down, too. Yeah, they'll mm -hmm. put it on AT&T or T-Mobile, for that matter, because they're shutting theirs down before that's, 2023. That's my point. That's my point. If I, was, <laughs> if I was Verizon, I'd be like, look, we're shutting it down. Everybody's shutting it down, dog. Buy something <laughs> new, you know? Yeah, yeah. I can't wait for that day. Oh, man. It's good. <laughs> See, good the, the thing is, is that I don't think that LTE is going to be turned off for at the minimum 20 years from now. I'm telling no, you. No, 30 to 30. 30 to 40 years? No way. No, dead No serious. way. I'm going to no, be 69 serious. by the yeah. time that LTE is done? No way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, Steven Sneed's like, Yes, meat is going to be already in our 30s. Oh, hell no. I swear, if we get a shutdown date of LT at like 2070, 2080, <laughs> I'm just shutting the channel down in like three years. <laughs> like, I'm not going to be a part of any of that nonsense, bro. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only way, see, this is the issue. The only way that we could not shut it down is if more spectrum is available to purchase. That's what I'm talking about, Alexis. Yeah. If you think about those devices, those 3G-based devices that are, you know, doing, you know, small bandwidth requirements, tasks, whatever, that stuff's got to get upgraded. 
All you need is something LTE-based, and then you're set for another 30 years, apparently. 40 years. Oh. Yeah, I remember there's actually a lot of uh, home monitors that monitor, uh, like, old uh, elderly, you know, patients' health and stuff. They actually call 911 for them, and it runs over 1x calling. Jesus. Help, I can't get up. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Yeah. Help, I'm on, not on LTE. Help. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then there's that then there's that brand of people that are like, Nope. Everything's fine. I'm not updating anything. Get off my lawn. Thank you. My yeah, sprinkler but... system uses three G. Get <laughs> off my lawn. And then if you <laughs> shut me down, I'll sue. Oh gosh. Yeah. Right. That's like yeah, the we'll, person who spilled we'll coffee. We'll be on saying their that about LTE when we're in our seventies or eighties. Don't take my LTE away from me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to the Capitol. I'm putting this on the news. Yeah. You hear me, Verizon? I'm putting you on the news. <laughs> Don't take my LTE away from me now. <laughs> First yeah, of all, exactly. you took my 3G. Now you're taking my LTE. What is this blasphemy? Yeah. Oh, my God. Unbelievable, man. I'm done with L. I mean, I haven't seen 3G in ages. Actually, I'll I tell you. I'll tell you why. Hold on. I'll tell you why it's going to be 30 to 40 years. Because of a little thing called DSS. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, Zero Cool is absolutely right. Because if, yeah. if you think about it, right, we got CBRS. Right? How much better, though, is is DSS on standalone? Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's a thing. It's going to be, it's going to be really good because on standalone, you don't, you don't, any of it. It's just I'm talking about the the older devices that still have the LTE, and all those medical devices that will be soon upgraded to LTE. Yeah, they're going to have to use that DSS on our connection on LTE. That's why it's going to take a you know thirty to forty years to shut it off. That's I'm being LTE. LTE be realistic. fine, man. We just got to get away from the three G stuff. You know. Yeah, it's, I I I uh, I don't like the fact that it's going to take till 2023 for Verizon CDMA to shut down that code division multi-access <laughs> crap. Hey, listen, <laughs> it, a lot of people think CDMA was better than GSM and that's wrong. GSM was always better than CDMA, but Verizon was always better than everybody else. And it had nothing to do with the fact that they use CDMA. Verizon just had the larger network. That's what people don't understand. People thought because the Verizon network was so big compared to the others, oh, CDMA is better. Wrong. The network was bigger because they had more tower sites. It was irrelevant if it was GSM or CDMA. You know, but people automatically thought, oh, CDMA is great. No. Actually, no. GSM is better. Yes. But our GSM networks weren't as large compared to the CDMA network that was considered king. Correct. Yeah, I I remember when I went to Canada for the first time. I think I was eighteen or nineteen or something, and but I had full HSPA coverage, and everywhere I went, and it was just amazing. And I ever since I always been a GSM HSPA fan. But see, here's the thing: call quality on Verizon was was better, not just because it was CDMA. In fact, actually, voice over LTE could have been better executed by GSM Technologies. But again, Verizon did it better. It wasn't really that it was CDMA based. It was that Verizon did it better. It was their investment in the technology. It was the execution of their voice over yeah. LTE. That's what did it. It was Verizon. Everything was Verizon, not CDMA. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, LeBron James can wear any shoe in the world, and he's the best player in the world. It doesn't matter what shoes he wears. You get what I'm saying? That's what it is. That's the truth, bro. Michael Jordan can wear any shoes in the world. He could have worn moccasins. <laughs> I get to your the analogy. Games. You know what I'm saying? It just did not matter, bro. And, and Tom That's... Brady's cleats, right? Just Tom Brady's okay. cleats, dog. <laughs> Tom Brady. Tom Brady could have wore socks to Super Bowl Fifty Five. He's still the goat. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was at Verizon, I to get our KPIs down to a point. 06 uh, failure rate on Volte. We stayed up many, many nights testing, and it was just, it was, it was so uh, painstaking to do. But we, that's how we perfected Volte on uh, Horizon when it was launched. 
You know, it the was investment. always excellent. It was engineering so investment. Good. Yeah, it was always so good. The calling, uh, zero cool. Is this real life? This day, my friends on Sprint I don't have Volte. Tell them to upgrade their phone, and they will. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait! I gotta tell you this. Is this real life? Like uh, we were just talking about the whole three G thing, right? They have to have an upgraded uh, phone to take advantage of the Volte. I'm sorry, what do you think but that's the truth. What do, you, what do you think they're in, bro? Yeah. I don't know, like a Which, I, um, like a like a Samsung that, three, maybe. I don't know. That is blasphemous. That's what I feel about that comment. That's what I feel about that comment, man. Oh man, that is hilarious, man. You guys are too much, bro. You got to get out of that five as dog. <laughs> yeah, you need to. Yeah, you need to upgrade, buddy, because your phone will be on uh, uh, T-Mobile Volte. Okay. Let me find out. They're on an iPhone four S with original battery. Let me find out. <laughs> yeah, you have, yeah, you have to be uh, the, the the qualifications for Volte are iPhone six S or better, and Galaxy S six six five yeah. five, actually five was LTE. Yeah, it yeah, was LTE. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, just tell them to upgrade their phone and be fine, buddy. But but I just want to get a new SIM card. <laughs> Can I get a new SIM? Tell card? me get a yeah. Tell me get a TMX SIM. <laughs> And a new phone, and there's going to be a, a full T or a LTE icon when you call somebody, and then you'll be on full T. Dude, I remember when I used to have the uh, Nexus phones, and I would use unlocked devices. And the only carrier who gave me the advanced calling features was Verizon on an unlocked phone. Hey. AT&T locked me out. T-Mobile locked me out. Sprint locked me out. Verizon gave me HD calling, voice over LTE, the whole shebang. You want to know? You want to know what T-Mobile is saying? If you don't have a TNX SIM and you're on Sprint, see, this is what I, they feel. How dare you? How dare you say? <laughs> I'm telling you, how dare you not have a TNX SIM by now? No. Yeah, everybody on Sprint, you need to upgrade to a TNX SIM ASAP. Okay, because. It's come a time where your sprint sims are just gonna go to down the toilet, then you won't have great service anywhere. Yeah. You won't be able to eat layer cake. You won't be able to eat you some get, layer cake. Yeah, you won't get layer cake, you won't you won't get clown cake, you won't get zebra cakes. <laughs> you know, you, you won't get any of that stuff. <laughs> you won't get little dinosaurs at Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have it, okay? There's race cars. <laughs> there's. A... <laughs> I can't take. I can't take this here, sir. Bro, liter I literally, bro. I, I can't do it, man. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Rugrats, bro. I gotta show you guys. Oh something. no. Yeah, I gotta show you guys. So, um, some of the things <clears throat> that T-Mobile has tried to do in their marketing of their 5G has been an absolute, just like hysterical thing. I say they just embrace. The dinosaurs thing. I think that's I like the, the best. Paint brushes. <laughs> you like the so like with the large brush, the skinny brush, and all that. Yeah, I like that analogy. People can relate to that. I don't know because dinosaurs are extinct, man. What are they gonna do? <laughs> like, well, no, you remember they like, <laughs> <laughs> like here. Okay, why don't we use? Give this? me the Tyrannosaurus, please. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, come on. Like, like we could just pick one of these. I think it would work. Like. Um, man, where is the one that I found? And I tweeted at Neville. He never replied. Oh, that was kind of disappointing. Dude. But, like, it, it had, like, all of the network executives. It was, like, Tommy, Phil, and Lil, and all them, and Dill. And, uh, you know, we could just do this here. I'll do a swing. Do you, do you remember when Sprint had, Sprint had the hamster commercials? Remember those? I do. I do. And uh, yeah. <laughs> one of uh, Marcelo's uh, first earnings call was, like, uh, we got hamsters talking to dead people. I'm so mad. <laughs> so he was so mad. <laughs> that was market commercials. Yeah, bro. I think they could just do the, you know, the dinosaur things, bro. That would be cool. You know. Mm. This one. Rolling with the homies. With the layer cake, you could just do that. <laughs> Sprint, let me know to go into the store and get the T-Mobile sim. 
Yeah, yeah they've been yeah. reaching out to people for a while. Yeah, Magenta T Rex, embrace the em, embrace the dinosaurs, the paintbrush. Stick with something though, right? I don't know. They they seem like they're throwing stuff at the wall. A lot of people on the Sprint subreddit have been avoiding it. Oh, the sweaty armpits, Eugene. <laughs> hey guys, how are you? <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> I haven't left my house in 19 months. <laughs> What's going on out here? <laughs> oh my God. Oh, man. man, Big Los is laying low. I only saw him pop in here a couple of times, man, honestly. <laughs> oh, Eugene. That's what I, I mean. I, that's what I'm saying, Dan, is just pick something and roll with it. We got dinosaurs. Then we got race cars. We got speed boats. <sighs> we got the paintbrushes. Whoa. What I do think that they should stick with is they've been putting a lot of advertisements on YouTube about the tower upgrades, the modifications, the 5G, the tower expansion. They need to stick with that for as long, for like ever, right? So, because that's what, uh, when Verizon, you know, was first rolling out their tower upgrades and their network modernization plans, they, they did the whole, can you hear me now thing, right? Yeah. Right. And that worked, right? Mm -hmm. they, people trusted Verizon because they had the, they knew they had tower density, you know, T-Mobile needs to do the same thing. And uh, I say skip the dinosaurs and, and Rugrats. Yeah, Ranger, you were timed out because you you talk too much, bro. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> if you really must know you were timed out because you talk too much, the mods hit you, dog. You know, say what you got to say, but don't be crazy now. You know. You guys good? We covered everything, man. We covered a lot of stuff tonight. There was right. a... Uh... A new movie that dropped on HBO Max called The Little Things premiered oh, yeah. last Friday. Mixed reviews, you know, forty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Sneed, is that what's your take? Good any, is that considered good anymore? Forty eight percent. I feel no. like they really, they really yeah. bring scores down these days. Yeah, it's not that good of a score, honestly. But Denzel, dog, Denzel, Mr. Washington. Denzel's the I, best, bro. I think Jared Leto outacted yeah. Denzel in this movie. This is my personal opinion. I'm a huge movie really? buff. Did you see the movie? I guess I gotta watch it. You gotta watch, watch it. the Just movie. Turn it around. Yeah. Dog. Just turn around dog. yeah, yeah. Jared Leto actually did what's called method acting, to where uh, the character that he's playing, he actually practices it off off uh, script and off set, right? So um, most actors don't do method acting. They just when they're doing a scene, they just get into the form and they just do the scene where it's method acting. You get like kind of the, the method of repetition and get into the character set mind, mindset of the character more easier. And if, and it's, it's some actors do it, some don't, but to me, uh, a lot of good method actors, uh, were, um, was, uh, one of the really good ones was Heath Ledger and Batman and Batman, right? Mm -hmm. When they did the Joker, he did, he did method acting for that. Uh, another one was, can Christian I mention Bat something about yeah. Jared Leto real quick? Mm -hmm. He was not that bad in Suicide Squad. People really, really came down hard on him for that role. And I thought he was okay. I mean, it wasn't a great character. But, man, he did his best with what, the, with what they wrote him. Yeah, I agree. You know, it, was, it just was not that bad. I just think people had some different expectations for that character, you know, and how they developed it with that bird lady or whatever her name was i thought it was all right Harley he was Quinn. A little, right he was a little um little maniacal that that's kind of the goal right with that type of whatever you know well you know um it's interesting you mentioned that because jared in that movie without spoiling it it, it he made me feel like i wanted to kill somebody man like the guy's portrayal of the character was perfect I was like, this guy, I, oh, you know, but then, um, what's the other guy's name? The, uh, Malik, I think that's his last name. Yeah, Remy Malik. Yeah, yeah. Remy Malik. Yeah. All right. I don't know. To me, the guy's face is just, I'm, I'm not with the face. Yeah, yeah he, he, I don't think that, I don't think his character per, per, portrayed a big tough def, uh, detective. Now, if you guys want to watch yeah. the best acting ever, great acting, because I know movies like the back of my head, go watch. Uh, Gary Oldman's uh, Darkest Hour. Go watch that movie. 
if you haven't seen that movie, go watch it. It is he won an Academy Award for it because it's it's the greatest acting of him playing Winston Churchill ever. So Darkest Hour, go watch it. Let me know. Let me know on yeah, Twitter. Ryan, I agree with you. I think that movie lacked direction. You know, like where they wanted to go with it. That's that's the one thing I could say about the Avengers films. Even if you don't like those types of sci fi movies, at least the timeline made sense somewhat you know, character development and stuff like that, you know. Maybe maybe that's the lost art of movies. Maybe it's the writing. Maybe it's the director. I don't know. There's something happening on a production standpoint that's just not the same. I agree. A lot of it has, has been, in my opinion, uh, the, uh, it's not well written. The script is not well written. And then if you, if you don't have a, a well-written script... It doesn't matter how much production value, because a producer has to fund the movie. Okay, it doesn't matter how much producing you know gets done funding the movie if the script is not well written. You know, you have to captivate uh, your audience, right? And that's done with a well written script and screen. You ever watch? You ever watch those Transformers movies from back in the day? Like, couple of them, but it's okay. Just... So, so here's the thing: the cinematics of those movies, the explosions, the cars, the transformations yeah. of the cars to robots is sweet. Yeah, the music, like the effects, the writing, the storyline sucks so bad. <laughs> it's almost like you just want to watch it until the you start hearing metal slamming into each other. <laughs> then you turn the volume up, like yeah. but the but the people exactly. and like like the movies need to take place on Cybertron. And the other stuff can all just go to hell. Like, yeah. it, you know, they got the, the girls thing going on. They got the guy and they fall in love. And, Come on, bro. We came here for Optimus Prime and Megatron to blow each other up, dude. You know what I'm saying? A Bumblebee, you know. Yeah. Ironhide got the cannons. Bro, we, we're trying to see some metal warfare. You right, know? Dude, right. I had an Optimus Prime when I was a kid that was three feet tall, dude. Yeah, I was slamming that on kids, dog. I was knocking them out. <laughs> you think I want to hear about, you know, Kylie, Miley, and Friley hanging out in the trees, bro, trying to hide from Transformers. Get out of here. You know, <laughs> seriously, dude. I want Megatron turning into a tank, a jet, his face turning into a gun. You know, I uh -huh. want that type of stuff. Bro, so the last night was with Mark Wahlberg. He was all right. But then he had a daughter. You know, and then they tried to make it all sentimental. Bro, no. There's nothing sentimental about Megatron's face turning into a gun and blowing everything up, dude. I want evil. I want the guy with the deep, dark voice going, eh, you know, up against the mic. Eh, you're all going to die. You know, like, I want that. Yes, you know, I absolutely. want things. Ex I want the planet about to explode. You know what I'm saying? I want, yep. like, everything. I, I mean, okay, Mountain Dew machines turning into robots. That's kind of sweet. Okay, I ain't going to lie. Start shooting out Mountain Dew cans and bottles. All right, that was kind of cool. But, dude, they're getting the ca sweetest cars, too. The Bugattis, the, the Paganis. Dude, these like million dollar cars, and yeah. you can't get right. You want to put all these people and get out of here. Get these things flipping and somersaulting and blowing stuff up, bro. Cannons yeah. everywhere, you know? Yeah. Oh, Terrible yeah. acting. Mark Wahlberg couldn't save the Transformers. And he was, dude, Mark no. Wahlberg got like 100 roles in the last five years. He was in everything. He was getting off of one set and going to another one, you know? And he couldn't even save those movies. I'm kind of excited about the, uh, the Tom Cruise uh, Mission Impossible seven and eight, you know, <laughs> all the all the set action that he had to do. <laughs> mm. I seen a dude today wearing Tom Cruise mom shoes. Uh, <laughs> you guys ever? <laughs> You're wearing these moccasins, bro. Hey, uh, uh, Carter wants to know Moose about these Grand Canyon sites. Any uh, any insight? Yeah, it's a pretty unbelievable. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it is. I mean, come it on. Is. Look, yeah. who in the right mind... Oh, Carlos was saying that Verizon has coverage at the Grand Canyon. Just Verizon do. does yeah. have coverage yeah. at the Grand Canyon. T-Mobile has some coverage at the Grand Canyon. Yes, everybody has some coverage of some kind. Yes. Roaming, whatever. We are talking about brand new, you know, Band 30, Band 14, Band 12, Band uh, 4, Band 66. We're talking about several carriers, dog. Who in the right mind... AT&T. Exactly. The Death Star. Let's talk, let's talk about how it is. 
They're literally <laughs> like <laughs> they're charging up that beam, dog. They're charging up that beam. <laughs> they're beaming it in places. You know, uh, there was a video on Tech Extremists uh, videos where he was driving by this area of uh, Arizona where AT&T has poor coverage. Well, guess what? By the end of this year or even by the, by the middle of this year, all of that will be filled with brand new cell sites. So no more conversations of, oh, there's no coverage here. There might be no coverage in like small pockets, but they'll be filled in. But the majority of the highways and the majority of the United States will be done by the end of this year. Nice. It's going to be amazing. Man. I, I, would, I honestly I would want like to, to take see a road my trip. home site get upgraded, man. Oh, it's going to be so nice. I'm telling you. But, you know, the idea would be to do a road trip. You know, sneed on the road. Sneed on the wheels. In the, in the sneed mobile, you know. There you in go. the Volvo mm -hmm. Easy. You feel me? Um, both south and north rim. Nice. Both. Ah, Megan Fox. Yeah, but no. you could see why she got no. but you could see why she got the role, dog. It's because she was hot. That's it. That's the only reason why. She can't act for for nothing. Bro, why was she always showing her teeth in the movie? It was always like Because it scared just... away the robot. Oh dude. <laughs> dude, I think the biggest news article of the day is Bezos steps down as Amazon CEO. Yeah, heard about that. That star real talk. Yeah, the Jeff Bezos. So he's out as CEO. What do you guys what do you guys think? Something happened? Or just legit like planned on walking away at a certain point, and just concealed it. The guy has so much money he could do whatever he wants. Yeah. Right, but there's usually said, a reason for these it. types of moves, right? Retirement, that's my guess. Or he wants to focus his time on the space thing, you know? Compete with Elon? Compete with Elon, yeah, that's right. Could be. I want, you know, I want Starlink to go national, international, whatever, however you would scale that. I want I want that out, like, immediately. You never know what the new CEO might bring. I mean, he's still going to be executive chairman of the board. So sure. either way, he's going to have to approve it, yay or nay, whatever. Yeah, the... but he's he's letting go of the reins a little bit. Yeah, yeah, of course, day-to-day -day right. operations, yeah. yeah. But, you know, like, for example, for many years, I've been listening to Scott Galloway, professor at NYU Stern of School of Business um, uh, at NYU. And he's been saying since day one, Amazon should be broken up by the cloud services. AWS has, that's its own company. By itself would be making billions, right? So is that what, is that what we do now? A... a People figure out a way to become so big mm -hmm. that we just have to regulate them and break them up. Oh, no, no, not not regulate. Sorry, I, I didn't mean it from a governmental point of view. No, me neither. But I'm just saying, right. like that seems to be what happens. A company finds a way to bypass and get past all these little things, and they mm -hmm. get so big that they actually have to be dismantled. Yeah. You know, sometimes it might be better if it's broken up into pieces. I mean, look at Google. Yeah, but Google's what I'm no saying is what systems are in place to prevent them from getting too big? Like, the problem with what Amazon did and what Google did and what Facebook mm -hmm. has done is they sidestepped everything. Why have you not found... Like, this is the problem with our legislators. Our legislators' aggr aggregate age is 10,956. Dude, they're old people that don't understand technology and have no idea what data is. Like, they don't know what data is. They think data is like a, a data table at a company. But really what data is is people's tendencies. And that's what Amazon did, and that's what Facebook does, and that's what WhatsApp did. They took their tendencies. For all we know, they've had control of people's cameras, and they were – watching what their eyes would do when they would look at something on their screen. Oh, that's how they respond to that. Oh, that's their response when they get recommended this. Come on, dude. That's what they were doing. They got big because nobody was checking them in the first place. Right? There was no check. Then they get huge and you want to try to check them? Bruh. They got lawyers now. <laughs> they got teams of lawyers now with more money than you even know. 
They got Megan Fox's teeth. Yeah, Megan Fox. Oh, yeah. That's the, right. Scott Galloway just tweeted out four hours ago, zero to 1.5 trillion, nobody in history. Turned biggest cost centers into profit. So cost centers are data centers, right? Cost centers. Uh, nobody in history has done that before. Established reoccurring revenue relationship with 82% of households. That is Amazon Prime. And hired 500,000 plus people in 12 months in the pandemic. Bezos, look, man. Look, bro. You can buy this keyboard anywhere. And people buy it from Amazon. Yes. You could buy your detergents anywhere. Yes. And people Costco. buy it from Amazon. <laughs> Costco, duh. What is it about Amazon that's so fantastic? Is that they will just drop it off to your door? You could literally be a hermit, bro. You can order all. You can order all your food from Amazon. Bro, my cousin. You can order all your ramen noodles and share them with Charlie Ergen. Charlie Ergen ramen noodles, bro. It's the most sour and dirtiest flavor they have. You can get the mega pack of Charlie Ergen ramen noodles, bro, for like thirteen dollars, chief. Yeah. Bro, my cousin. She's pregnant right now, about to deliver this month. She told me straight up, because I haven't spoken to her in a while, she's like, I've been a hermit. And I'm like, what are you talking about? How can you possibly be a hermit? She's like, I order Instacart for my groceries. I order Amazon for my groceries. Whatever I need, Amazon or Costco has delivery now. And grocery stores have delivery now. Yep. So there is literally no need for me to leave whatsoever. Real quick hashtag. Hashtag ramen is fire. <laughs> So, yeah, there's no need to leave your house. Bro, the only reason I ever leave the house is to go to work. You know, the kids learn better in the school building. Mm -hmm. And they're happy. Dude, I did not like virtual teaching. It was kind of cool waking up like 10 minutes before first class, <laughs> making coffee, and then being in sweatpants. But, like, honestly, man, it's so much better. Like, we're doing a lab tomorrow, and I can't wait. You know, I'm gonna, I got them all spaced out. They'll take turns at the lab stations. I'll disinfect and all that stuff. The kids are all wearing masks. We'll be good. You know what I'm saying? It's not April anymore. We know what it takes to, to be clear of things. Uh, I don't like this version, bro. You know? And actually, companies like Amazon, they took advantage of the pandemic. I mean, yeah, like Jeff... Bezos heard about the lockdown. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> literally, they're like, shut down. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Profits? <He's> like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like Michael, Michael Jordan when he hit the game winning shot. He's like, <sighs> Man. Yeah, dude. Hey. I'm I'm telling you, man. <laughs> so much money. So I like to buy from eBay. Brand new stuff. It doesn't have to be used stuff. People sell new stuff all the time. Warranted everything. I buy from eBay. I don't really like uh you know buying from Amazon. The two day shipping is tremendous. I ain't gonna lie, bro. And sometimes actually if you buy it early enough in the day, you get it the next day. And they call it two-day shipping. They give you every reason to use the service, man. Prime Video. You know, they act like they're doing you a favor. Get a year of Amazon Prime and save $19. You know, they think they're doing you a favor. You know, them $13, $13 ramen noodles, good for six months. You know, buy my house back from eBay. Dude, <laughs> so you were here for that episode of the podcast, James? <laughs> you just mean sold the crib on eBay, dog. <laughs> and she was counting the money on the porch, bro. She was like this. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Amazon, dude. <sighs> but it's hard. Like now people, they're like, it's all about that convenience, man. I do no, like I, buying local. Uh, yeah. los, I do. I do like buying local. We have a hardware store right up the street, actually. I, I like buying local, but I am guilty of Amazon. I most of most of my uh, appliances, some of them are are Amazon from yeah. Amazon. I guess they got the feature where it's like automatic, like purchase, like timely. So like if you use a certain soap, like every month you get to re up. It just sends it and charges you. 
It's on like auto purchase. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know the recurring purchases. Yeah, man. Screw Amazon. <laughs> Screw them. We don't need any more companies like that. We're good. Hey, let's wrap it up. Oh. Let me check really it? quickly, light reading, see if there's anything crazy. You guys want to parry after this? Oh, I'm gonna yes. be testing, dog. I'm gonna be testing. Yeah. So we, yeah, so, we, so we go to so we do your parry then? We can. We can. Mm -hmm. Nice. We um, parry dog. Oh, here's something that was interesting that we should definitely discuss. Dwayne Benefield, VP of T Vision. The I head guy. My, I thought that was my neighbor, dude. Dwayne? <laughs> Dwayne Benefield. Yeah. Uh, he left, he's leaving the company to go to TELUS, which is a big carrier in Australia, mm -hmm. right? But, oh, sorry, Canada, sorry, Canada. Canada, right. Canada, but this is pretty interesting because the replacement to him <laughs> is a marketing and brand genius, okay? Um, just forgot her name really quickly. Oh, Hold on. Let me... <laughs> Hold on here. Give me one second. I just got her. Julie Gold Gold uh, Thwad, something like that. So, Julie, SVP of Marketing and Emerging Products at T-Mobile, is now taking over T-Vision. What I've been told by Tyrone is that T-Vision has done very well, and it is a hot item. It's a, it's making the T-Mobile experience stickier, which means that people are less likely to leave if they have more than one product. So if they have home internet, if they have T-Vision, if they have wireless, you know, whatever it takes, keep them, right? Give them a bunch of credits, whatever. But the point is, is that they are really going after this, um, this segment of the market. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. I like, yeah, I, I like, um, I like the T-Vision direction. They had the little snafu with the carriage deals. Mike Sievert was tripping. I don't know what he was talking about. We'll work with our programming and all that. I don't know what happened there, really. I really don't. I don't know the details. But they fixed the channel arrangement. They got the carriage deals right. And they've been golden ever since. People want the service. Bro, people, there's more people that trust T-Mobile as a business than any other carrier. Nobody trusts AT&T, dog. Nobody. AT&T's like the guy who broke into your garage 17 times and you caught him every time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and, and, and Verizon has a bad history and people will never get past it because they used to say, fine, you don't like it, leave. Right? They were the snarky, stuck-up carrier. People can't get past that even though they're different now. Right? So people would rather spend money even if the product isn't as good. Maybe AT&T TV is better. But they trust in T-Mobile that they're being fair with them. They'll give them their money. And John Leisure was part of that. All Mike Seaver has to do is carry the torch. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't even leave the house. And it doesn't even matter. <clears throat> the pedigree is that, you know, they have this reputation as the uncarrier, you know, and... Mm -hmm. That's good, but they just, they just, people would, they would rather spend $50 a month on the home internet because they know what they're getting and they know the price is going to be locked in and they're not going to be getting the okie doke from Comcast, Charter, Cox, yes, exactly. trash, garbage can residue, all right, garbage can juice, nuclear dump, Cox. They'd rather give it to T Mobile. And I've mm -hmm. said it time and time again. I would rather burn my last dollar and starve than give it to Cox. Yeah, 100%. That's how bad they were to me. I think Cox has a worse customer service than even Comcast, and Comcast was notorious for bad customer service. And just happened today, they raised their entry-level low-income offering to 50 down and 5 up so that people can actually utilize it for Zoom meetings and all that for for schools, Comcast. What what what's special yeah, about fifty megs per second home internet? 
100 megabits per it's, second home internet. There's it's pretty usable special. for a small but there's, but family, there, like three, but four there's people. there's nothing special about yeah. it is my point. Yeah, nothing right. special. But people would rather have that than 500 megs mm -hmm. and a gigabit from Comcast and Charter because of how they treat people and how they give people the rigmarole and the runaround and the, and the phone tag and the FCC complaints and the Better Business Bureau complaints. Seriously, dude. Mm -hmm. T-Mobile has has established themselves as a company willing to fight for your business. Those companies don't fight for your business. They will pack up their crap and leave town if new game comes. They want nothing. They would rather pack up all their trucks and vans and leave than compete with another rival company. To show you how awful their business ethics are. Because they know they would have that would drive down their pricing, and they would have to actually try and produce a good product. And you know what's worse about what we're talking about? So Cox, going back to Cox, right? Cox. Cox, Cox is a private telecom, right? Trash. They Trash own communications. a lot of yes. things. They own Kelly Blue Book. Did you know that they owned the Kelly Blue Book? They also They're, own. Go ahead. I think I think Barry told me that Cox is the 14th richest wealthiest family in America. It's I think really Barry. Yeah. And and um, Cox owns uh, several local channels, so like Channel Seven in Atlanta, mm -hmm. or you know ABC in Atlanta, for yeah. example. Yeah. And all of these are now in dispute with AT and T and Directv because Cox wants more money, and we're they're like, what the hell? We're gonna have to increase prices. It's not fine. It's not. It's not right. Story time about Cox. I was talking to the guy who was fixing my cable mm -hmm. otherwise just bsing doing nothing because they don't fix anything mm -hmm. he just pushed dirt around and rolled in the snow um <laughs> he told me that 10 years ago there was an employee at the cle headquarters for cox screaming at the top of his lungs for two years at all the faculty meetings staff meetings mm -hmm. when are we going to offer a streaming service when are we going to have a streaming app when are we going to do this? When are we going to do this? He did it for two years. He quit. He left the company. Mm -hmm. How's streaming right now? Horrible. Huge. Huge. Streaming is huge right now. Right? This guy was screaming it. They told him to shut up and stop being annoying. You get what I'm saying? So that's a tell about Cox. And I think the bigger concern is, is that Cox is the only game in town where they have their stronghold and people would rather find a workaround than to spend money with them. I told the the Cox guy that was in my house, I said, look, bro, you might be a nice guy. I'm sure you have family. You got a wife and a kid just like me. You're probably just like me. We're probably the same. We're not so different. But if I were you, I would look for a new job and I'll tell you why. You guys are done. The moment anything else comes to this town, it's over. And it's coming. I've I've talked to every person on this block. They have AT&T DSL because they can't stand your guys' work. It's over. The moment anything else comes here, all your crap is going to be out on the tree lawns. All your junk hardware, all your crappy cables. I'm going to rip all that crap off my house. It'll be on the curb waiting for you. Come and get it. Yep. Garbage, trash, mm -hmm. residue, slime mold, black mold, disease. What else? Uh, fungus. I, yeah, <clears throat> I could tell you how to rip your, your uh, cable box knit off your house. That's easy. I'd show you how to do it in mm -hmm. a fun way. We'll do, we'll do it on live stream. We'll do it. All right, I'll show you, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. By the way, here's another thing that I wanted to mention. So the LG Wing and the... Pixel 5, right? We're able to get a software enabled upgrade to hardware, right? Is that correct? Zero cool. It's a software enabled yeah, it's a software hardware upgrade, yeah. upgrade, right? Software yeah. enabled hardware upgrade. Okay. How come we cannot get other m modems to uh, get this upgrade? Like, this is so ridiculous. It's, it's not, it's not like the modem per se that's at fault it's actually the manufacturer the oem and the relationship that they uh 
it's a relationship that they have with the carrier. Like I said before, uh, Apple and Google have that relationship with the carrier to where they're not going to be jerked around by them versus other OEMs they are. Uh, think about it. What would happen if if uh, Verizon or AT&T said, I don't like this feature in your Google or Apple phone? They wouldn't allow that. Like, you know what I mean? That's why. And they, uh, they and again, like the FirstNet thing, right? The FirstNet devices are certified as well as the Pixel devices to work on the FirstNet. Uh, so they have to play nice with the carrier. Um, the Samsung... I think the reason why they're not getting, I mean, there's no reason that they can't get favorable uh, uh, favorable uh, terms with the carriers is just that they just don't care. Mm-hmm. They really don't. They're, they make so much money, right, uh, that they just don't care, you know? So I don't know what their market cap is compared to Google, but I just, it might be, I've been actually thinking about this actually, because App- mm-hmm. Apple is an American company, right? Google is an American company, right? Uh, South or uh, Samsung is South Korean. LG is South Korean as well. True. Yeah, I just don't. I don't know. I think it's something with maybe maybe Samsung has rubbed the carriers the wrong way. I don't know, but it's just it's never going to. But it's happen. not even the carriers. It's the, it's the FCC that would allow them to enable oh, no, that. No, 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 no. You know what they, I'm saying? They filed to the FCC and the FCC approves. That's yeah, it. that's it. That's yeah, it. That's it. So that's it. why? It's as simple as that. They would never deny an approval. Why would they? Exactly. Yeah. Why? We, They've been pushing for 5G for freaking five years. We need more OEMs to step up to the plate to enable other bands that are capable on that modem. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I just think it... Uh... So painful reminder that the Pixel and the iPhones are the only phones to really buy. Yeah, right. Exactly. And apparently that's the having... LG and apparently the LG Velvet, chicken wing, whatever. Uh, I don't know. That's I've been preaching for years. The the Pixel phone and iPhone is the way to go. I only, you know, I I I gave Samsung the benefit of the doubt by buying the S twenty, but that's just going to be a phone to use on the beach. That's when it's going to be. <laughs> because that's what it's good for now. It's a uh, beach come phone. summer. It's a beach yeah. phone. It's my beach phone. Caleb yeah. in his beach chair. Yeah, yeah. With my Samsung S20, that's right. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, man. Is that thing still running? I know I had some issues before. The S20? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. It's it's good. It's good. Just got a couple of nicks on the screen, but now it's good. N30, I'd never seen that listed. I don't know. Wow. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't list yeah. N30, but could it get an update theoretically? Maybe you never know. Yeah. And if, if it does, Apple will probably enable it. In the yeah. words of Mike Tyson, I doubt it. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Pixel works fine on the beach. Of course it does, Pete. Yep. Pete's a Google guy like myself. Oh yeah. And zero cool. You guys and your iPhones, Moose. Come on, man. That's just too easy, bro. iPhone upgrade program. I mean, listen. If you're going to want the latest and greatest... But I don't want to be a beta, though. No, what? iPhone upgrade I don't wanna, program. I don't want to be a beta, dog. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's Carlos and the whole beta thing. I just don't want a beta. You're not going to be running a beta friends, software. Friends, friends don't let friends beta. <laughs> well, good news is that it's going to be live in about a, few, a couple weeks, so... The betas usually last a couple weeks. This one is probably going to be quick uh, because they're really only fixing a few things. But I am going to be telling you this. I have a lot of uh, developer notes that I'm sending in already because I noticed that when you switch um, from, let's say, AT&T to T-Mobile, um, that stays on the 5G. However, when you switch from T-Mobile to AT&T, it doesn't stick now, whether that is because huh. uh, there's too many people on N5 at the time, because you know how they're trying to manage how many people are on N5 at one time, right? Because it's only five by five. Um, or is it an actual issue? So I'm trying to do it as well with Verizon to see if that's an issue as well. And if that is the case where it doesn't do it on Verizon, but it does it on at t then it's a carrier issue instead of a software issue. All right, listen. 
the people I trust in this place, Moose, Los, and Alexis. And y'all are telling me to do the public beta. <laughs> so I'm, yeah. so I'm I, I literally, you are the only three people I trust when it comes to iPhones. So I'll do it. I'll do the beta. But I ain't no beta. <laughs> yeah. It's a daggone shame. You got a brother thinking about beta. Unacceptable. Blasphemous. Blasphemous. <laughs> <laughs> Last TK time. is live at the club. I ain't going to be there, dog. My wife catches me watching that crap. I'm done, dude. <laughs> I'll be on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I know what TK be doing on the getting club videos, man. It's said something on Netflix. It'll be fun. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you remember when Los was talking about OnlyFans and stuff. My wife heard that. She's like, what? What is going on? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, no. I'm like, no. <laughs> That's funny. Well, I, you know, they they say that people do it, and it's not even for anything weird or anything like that. Like people like legit produce content and put it Pokey there. Pokemon. Pokemon. Pokey. Yeah, she literally really? just posts some like suitable for work content, but it's like a side of her life that you wouldn't see. But then I was like, The Verge did an article about this where they were like, Why would people pay five bucks just to see? people's lives if you can do that on instagram yeah but instagram do they let it rip as they say the proverbial you know extracurriculars oh no 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 of course that's where See, that's of right. comes in no yeah. i don't <laughs> of <laughs> I'm done, bro. It's, it's over this podcast is done before we digress and go on to this rabbit hole man uh big shout out to zero cool thank you for being here man you're welcome. Thank you, Moose, for being here. You guys Thank are the best. Always. I know I got some donations recently. Uh, one was from James. I think Big Rubes came through. Um, there were a couple more, man. I'm trying to remember. See, that's the thing about StreamYard, man. It doesn't show me yeah. back far enough. So I apologize. Everybody who donated, thank you. Hashtag Mod Squad if you got the blue wrench. Hashtag Ravioli Gang if you're watching this while you're eating. Uh, I'm forgetting one. Oh, hashtag two live crew watching this on the live hashtag replay crew on DVR. Do me a favor. You want to help out the channel? Pop out of the live chat, hit the thumbs up button and share this everywhere except the T-Mobile Reddit. Regular Reddit. Cool. T-Mobile Reddit. No, 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 no. Anywhere else but that. And, uh, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. You know, however you share it, that's greatly appreciated. Your family, your friends, all that. Big Rubes, thanks. Oh, God, hashtag betas. Come on, dog. <laughs> eh. Oh, man. And you had, and you knew that I was going to highlight it because you gave the super chat. You just had to do it. See, that's how they get by it. They know I wouldn't normally highlight it, but they put the donation in there so they know I have to. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God, man. Crazy. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Mike. Joey. Appreciate you guys. NR, Adam, good to see you. James, thanks, MS, appreciate you. Uh, I'm not sure who else was any moderators. I know Josh was here. Alexis, thank you. Uh, BG Grizzly, I think he donated as well. Anyways, Kimon, Barry, you guys are awesome. Thanks for supporting and thanks for being here. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. We're headed over to the Periscope. Moose, you testing? Oh, yeah. What are we doing today? Let's are we do doing it. Verizon or are we doing T-Mobile? You have to pick one. Uh, yeah. Okay. T-Mobile change on the fly, man. I'm driving. <laughs> All right. Look, I say we 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 pick T-Mobile because yes, I'm N41, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Bro, you know that this is peak. I'm telling Bro, you right this. now. Look at this. My head's not even moving, dog. Look at this. Oh. It's like a swivel. <laughs> N41, man. N41, man. <laughs> You're like that guy, the eye hole man from, uh, what's it called? Uh, Rick and Morty, you know? I'm so a pickle. Pop up. I'm a pickle <laughs> Rick! <laughs> I'm a pickle. <laughs> Season five's coming, guys. Season five oh, is man. coming. It's coming. I'm, I'm N41, man. Somebody get my cape. I will save the day at <laughs> Super Bowl 55. 
my god. All six god. of my unforty one sites will save the day. Bro. <laughs> oh my god. On the back it says sixty megahertz. <laughs> <laughs> We out this piece. Peace. Later.